Morning, check. And there she is on the pitch here at Celtic Park, Susan Boyle, that wee lassie from Blackburn with the voice of an angel, a voice that is truly a gift from God, that touches the soul of all who hear it. Well, that's one CD I'll not be buying. Well, you know, uh, Hatchaboric was, was called the Holy Goalie. And then he then he put on some weight, so he became the roly poly holy goly. <laughs> and then he got a tattoo of a monkey bearing its boom. So I suppose he became the arse holy roly poly holy goly. <laughs> and we are gathered here to welcome another two additions of the Lourdes family into God's church. Hail, hail, Father. <laughs> yes. And what names do we take for the lovely twins? Uh, uh, Una Rea and Urzi Cheney. <laughs> there now follows an appeal on behalf of the National Catastrophe Association. Desperate and destitute, with little or no hope of recovery. This is why the National Catastrophe Association have launched this appeal on behalf of Glasgow Rangers Football Club. <laughs> the situation is critical but you can help by donating whatever you can. <laughs> Just £10 will keep two youth team players supplied with crisps and juice. <laughs> They'll be sitting the bench during first team games with little or no chance of ever seeing any action. <laughs> Just £20 will ease the supporters' suffering by paying for a taxi to the airport for Jerome Rotan. <laughs> And as little as £100 could buy Majid Bogera a hotel room after he's missed his latest flight back from Algeria. <laughs> Together, if we act now, we can prevent more suffering, restore the glorious Glasgow Rangers back to their rightful position in Scottish society and once again proclaim with conviction, we are... The PPL. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. S C O T L A N D. Go Not bad, ladies. Excellent pom pom work, but we could do better. Work harder, jump higher, bend lower. Again. S C O T L A N D. Go Great. You get into the shower and I'll join you in a minute. <laughs> what am I like? So, Charlie, a disastrous World Cup campaign followed by a couple of poor, friendly results. I mean, in the end... <laughs> Burley had to go, didn't he, mate? Well, Jim, to say I'm disappointed with George Burley would be an undergarment. <laughs> when Alex McLeish was in charge, it was close, but no cigar. With George Burley in charge, we didn't even get into the tobacconists. Managers are judged on results, and I'm no dietitian, but Burley's stats made for bad reading. When we were beaten one nothing at Hamden by the nether regions, that was the straw that stroked the camel's sack. Because with that defeat, our World Cup hopes were distinguished. Then came Wales, and after being crushed by the men of Garlic, George was a dead man talking. When Burley was appointed, 
had huge expectations, but it just hasn't worked out. So I think Gordon Smith and the other kid ponchos at the SFA had to bite the carpet in this one and say to Burley, those three little numbers, P45. <laughs> Tough talking, Charlie. Blues gate. <laughs> yes. Well, my memories of events that night are crystal clear, which is probably more than can be said for the players involved. Alan. Alan. Oh, Griggs, wake up. Where am I, Barry? Cameron Hurst. We only got beat three scud after of the Holland, so we're out celebrating Saturday's result. Eh? What time is it? Sunday. <laughs> what happened? Well, we had a wee swig, we had a wee swally, we had a wee song. And see, at one point, I got a boy and I passed it forward. Jeez, man. I must have been steaming. There know some other Scotland players here. Aye, but I'm not saying who. You're not a grass? No. I've just not got a scooby who they are. But shh, shh. We kind of let the gaffer find out. Burley? No, the real gaffer, Walter Smith. He'll be raging. And, and listen, see Coisty? He'll be bailing. See when he hears that we had an all right swally session and he was invited, he'll be raging, but listen, nobody can ever know. So shh, just keep stirring. Oh, where? <laughs> oh, uh, could we please have two large double vodkas and iron brew? And also, could we please have two pints of lager? Thank you. Are you not supposed to be professional athletes? You're right. You better make them lager tops. <laughs> See that CCTV camera up there? It's been recording all night, and we're sending the tapes straight to the SFA. CCTV? SFA? Scotland is awash with Scottish history and it's a history that must be told again and again and again by walking upstairs, wearing cargo breeks, kicking through holes, looking over my shoulder and posing like a haddie. <laughs> this is God's country, thank God. And this is its story. And yes, I do use L'Oreal <laughs> because I'm worth it. Here in Reporting Scotland, we are casting the net far and wide around the football stratosphere. And today, we are profiling a top coach. The coach who works with all the BBC presenters and coaches them to use their hands loads, open them dead wide, and then bring them back together again. I'm Glenn Campbell. I'm Jackie Bird. And tonight on the big landing here at the BBC, yet another one of those greeting-faced state of Scottish football and who is to blame debates. And later on, Phil and Ali will be along to play us a tune while looking as if they have piles. <laughs> while later, Eddie Reader will be cheering us all up with an old Scot song about death. But first, Glenn. Scotland, failure yet again to qualify for a major tournament. The national game is in crisis. Celtic, despite the dreams and songs to sing, the football is rubbish. Celtic are in crisis. 
are angels. They now have more supporters groups than they have halfpennies to rub together. <laughs> Financially, they are humped. Rangers are in crisis. No. <laughs> well, yeah, but hopeful. Any minute now, you know, there could be a major cash injection coming into Rangers. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. hee-haw, off this scratch card. <laughs> Shame. Have you got gold you don't want any more because it is broke or just pure skanky? Maybe it's a necklace with a gammy snack on it or a cheap old horn of plenty that looks more like a carrot. Maybe you bought it in Ratner's pure yonks ago and it turned your skin green. Whatever the reason, whap it in an envelope and send it to us at Gies Gold, Gies Use Money. I had 11 gold sovereign rings. I'm for each fire. I couldn't wear them anymore because they may have kept dislocating my shoulders, no? So, sent them into Gies Gold, Gies Use Money. I couldn't believe the amount I got for them. 48 pence. Gies Gold, Gies Use Money. Don't throw away your ming and jewellery. Send it to us and we'll throw it away for you. Well, you know, there's a real family atmosphere whenever Inverness play Ross County, you know. There's 7,000 people in the stadium and they're all related to each other. And now we go over to Jim Spence, who could only be from Dundee as he looks as if he's borrowed his dad's suit to appear in court. Jim, from Tanadice, is the Dundee United Rangers game abandoned? Yes, Rona, it's not looking good. A first half injury saw an RNLI lifeboat splashing onto the clock instead of a stretcher. So the game's in jeopardy? Yes, Rona, the game's abandoned and I'm now hitching a lift home from Noah in his arc. <laughs> And one of the Rangers players is getting carried off on a stretcher. I can't quite see who it is as they've covered him in a blanket. I think it's, I think it might be Alan McGregor. Oh yes, I can see it now, it's definitely Alan McGregor who is on that stretcher. <laughs> oh yes, that's definitely Alan. Tony, what a day, 6-0 to Celtic. Your team had 400 shots at goal and 98% of the possession. What did you make of that today? Well, you know, I was very disappointed, you know. We conceded a throw in, in the second half and that was all down to individual errors. Um, I thought we lacked quality in defence, didn't hold on to the ball well enough in the middle of the park uh, and it was due to a lack of quality in that area of the pitch and, well, you know, I'm, what can you say about a front two, you know? They only scored three goals each and, I, you know, I think that highlights just how short of quality we are up there. But, you know, we'll, we'll just take it in the chin, you know, and move on. So you're saying that you don't have enough quality players at Celtic Park? No, and we're, I think you're just trying to put words into my mouth there. <laughs> Are we teams splitting the old firm? Ah, oh, you know, it's like, it's like going into Greg's, you know, for a Brady and being served by an assistant that's skinny. You know, it's, it's never going to happen, you know. <laughs> Derek Riordan, I can tell you right now... You're one of the best three players I've ever worked with. You're up there with Kaka, Messi and Tom Scobie. Cheers, Gaffer. I tell you, Derek Riordan, I've no had a minute's peace all day with clubs on the phone asking about you. Which clubs? Arsenal? Barcelona? The Bongo Club, the Citrus Club, the Liquid Room, your bar for every club in Edinburgh. Get out! <laughs> All right, Ken. Shabba Laszlo. I didn't believe it. Nice to meet oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you got the time on you? Uh, okay, uh, now for me, I think uh, for such question you ask uh, for this time, which is okay for you, but for me, I, I don't know for sure, but uh, perhaps it runs out one day. Who knows? Uh, time is, is ticking clock, or maybe who can say for certain, like pendulum or sand, it passed whatever we say, and for sure, it is of course good for to use for measure of passing of circumstance. Uh, but 
the movement of the sun across the sky, okay, the moon rising, I say, why not? For sure, if this is what it has to be, then nothing I can change. <laughs> For sure, in physics, uh, motion alters time. Uh, Isaac Newton fought philosophical concepts of the day, this is love of absolute time, but others say time is immeasurable. Although, temporal measurements is vital for astronomy and navigation. Time is money. Life spans the ocean all the time while the pendulum swings. But as for time now, at this minute, I have to say sorry, I'm, I have no watch on. Bet633.com. It's all about throwing away your money. It's about the next crisis, the next club and the grubber, the next player done for speeding, the next half-wit and the phoning. It's about guessing Jim Trainer's weight to the nearest ton. The next West Ham fan in the pitch. The next St Mirren fan in the glue. How many touches will Scott McDonald take to control the ball? How many years in a row can Celtic attempt to flog another Lisbon Lions DVD? The next Rangers player to pull out the Scotland squad. How long does an SFA life ban last? Bet633.com. Waste even more money on football. <laughs> Welcome back to your STV News at Six. I'm John Mackay, and don't you wish your boyfriend was hot like me? <laughs> Later tonight on this channel, while the rest of the country is watching the start of an exciting new drama series, we'll be showing a documentary about... Cowden Beath bus station. <laughs> All that's still to come. But first, with the big sport, it's Raman Barwad. So, Raman, what have you got for us, Raman? Oh, well, John, uh, hello, folks. Uh, first up, Kenny Miller will be telling us how he's looking forward to getting married because he says it'll be nice to hear the words Mrs. Miller as opposed to Miller misses. <laughs> and by way of a contrast, John, and in a change of sport, we look at the controversial controversy currently embroiling the world of Scottish rugby. There's a player down injured there, but after the Bloodgate scandal in England, where an injury was faked using joke shop blood, the authorities have to be very careful, but this one, this one looks serious. <laughs> And all that coming up later in the sport. Sorry. Uh, uh, for, yes, for, uh, I, of course, mean spot. John. Raman Barwaj, thanks. What would sport do without you? STV, from Scotland to the world, whether they want it or not, I'm John Mackay. Bet you wish you were. Good night. <laughs> You know and love him from singing the anthem before Scotland games. Oh, flower of Scotland, come on! <laughs> but now hear the full range of Ronnie the Corry on the best Ronnie the Corry album in the world ever. Here, Ronnie sings Slade. Come on, feel the noise, come on! The Beatles. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! And Ronnie's moving recital of a classic Christmas hymn. Oh, come, all ye faithful. Come on! Get the greatest Ronnie the Curry album in the world ever. What are you waiting for? Come on! So what is it we're supposed to be doing here? It's a television show for folk that will do anything for publicity. I thought it was some sort of chocolate eating competition, you know? I'm a celebration. Get me out of here. <laughs> oh, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I recognise you. You're that ultimo bird. Michelle Mona. Michelle Moon, that's right. And you are? Francis Frank, Frankie Boy, Macca Macaveni. <laughs> So how's the bra business? Great. You see, people think that bras are just daddy holders, but they're no. Well, I mean, they are, but, but there's a science to it. My bras are the ultimate and bustular supportive technology. We do from the gravity-defying wired bras for the big melons, right, don't we? Super wonder bras for them saddled with a couple of pancakes. I cater for all shapes and sizes. Me too. 
I said, I'm starving, by the way. Do you think I'll give us our dinner? Do you think it'll be all right if we phoned out for a pizza? No, you have to eat what they give you. You catch your sale. We might have to go out and trap a grub or kill a lizard. Have you ever skinned a lizard? Only as a last resort. <laughs> Do you think there are any dangerous snakes here? I can think of at least one. <laughs> Get all your goodies for the big game. Pies made from sustainable mutton. Doritos made from fair trade Dorits. Monkey nuts from free range monkeys. <laughs> Ethical milk from coos with principles. Organic beer brewed naturally, even if it does taste boffin. <laughs> All described in boring, droning tones. The co op, good with football food, crap with advert voiceovers. <laughs> Show racism the red card. Well, you know, it was a nasty tackle by the boy racism. So, you know, I think I think the young Ray he had to go, really. Yeah. So, Tevez, understand you've a problem with me no communicating. You say I don't text you or phone you. Well, what do you expect? Do you want me to sing to you? Because listen. I'm Fergie of Manchester United. No Fergie of the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> well, hey, I'm speaking to you now, son. I'm a no. The only reason I'm speaking to you is to tell you you've been silt. You're away. Ofsky. So see you. Adios. I go. <laughs> Carlos, son, listen. It makes commercial sense for you to leave. It really does, because... See, without you, we'll radically increase the sales of posters, calendars, <laughs> and all merchandise with a team photo on it. Because, no offence, son, but we were only selling posters of your coupon to folk who wanted to put it in the mantelpiece and keep their wains away from the fire. <laughs> so, I mean, no offence, son, but if I hit you in the coupon with a boot, like I did with Beckham, the likelihood is... It would improve your looks. <laughs> I'd go. I'd beat it. <laughs> I can honestly say this is the worst Rangers team I've seen in the last 30 years. What about 1985 before Sunas? Right enough. Okay then. This is the worst Rangers team I've seen in the last 20 years. What about Alec McLeish's last season when you had Namucci, Capuccio, and oh, Austin aye. Stack? Okay. I'm going to have first fair. Well, this is the worst Rangers team I've seen in the last five years. But what about under Le Guin when Rangers had Sibo, Svensson and Letizzi? I can honestly say this is the best Rangers team I've seen in the last 30 years. Uh... Scotland's history is so rich and varied and so packed with history that Scotland's current present consists of nothing but TV programmes about Scotland's history. To view the past, we must walk back through time. And what better way to walk than outside Scarfords with a full icy blast of Scotland's wind blown right into your pus. <laughs> Scotland's past is a time of kings, queens, warriors, witches, bogles, and actors in costumes hired out Party shop. <laughs> Historically, they were a simple people from a backward backwater, ill educated, uncouth, some with yellow stumps for teeth. They were the Falkirk fans who attended the 2009 Scottish Cup final and saw their team gubbed. Yes, sir. Uh... You, you join me live in Bucharest, where some minor scenes of slight unpleasantness have broken out behind me, featuring a small, tiny, minuscule minority of aggrieved fans who may or, or probably may not support Rangers. Uh, UEFA have already overreacted by threatening to stop the game, when the only true course of justice would be to award Rangers the points. 
The evil Romanian tunstiles responsible for this must be hunted down, brought to justice, and if needs be, jailed for life for provoking the innocent souls behind me into these scenes of quite understandable minor frustration. <laughs> How kind. One of them has offered me a chair to sit on. <laughs> well, yes, you know, there was an open-air train ground bust up at Murray Park between Kenny Miller and Maggie Bruguera. But, you know, I don't blame it in the sunshine. Don't blame it in the moonlight. Don't blame it in the good times. I'll blame it in the boogie. <laughs> OK, Charlie, mate. Cards on the table. Is football going soft? James, I'm no Doc Martin, but I think the worst thing that ever happened to football was the invention of the cruciate medial. Soon as players discovered that, they were falling over themselves to tear them. And trust me, tearing the cruciate is like taking a head knock to your calf. Could see you hamstrung for the rest of the season. But James, let's be concisive. Many Scottish players are their own worst enemies. In the old days, whether it was a broken leg or a fractured tibia, you just stuck a poultice on it. Your poultice was your bread and butter treatment. And your magic sponge was your just dessert. Today, there's even a treatment involving Horses placenta, but let's be equine. You can't make a salt purse out of a cow's ass. <laughs> sure. Sure, the offers have been flying in since we did the X Factor. Oh, they have. Sure, they have. It's so exciting. Sure, it is. Celtic want us to sing at Celtic Park on the third of January, the day of the Old Firm game. It's the most effective way they can think of to clear the stadium. <laughs> well, you know. Proud. I'm very proud of, of Wayne Rooney. Now he's become a, uh, you know, a proud father. Uh, I went to the maternity ward to, to visit Wayne and, and Wayne's Wayne. <laughs> you know, I must say, you know, that Wayne's got his father's looks. But at least it's got his health. <laughs> I'm a more relaxed after leaving the Celtic job. Hi. Do I find hitting a few golf balls out in the golf course helps me relax? Hi. <laughs> My sports personality of the year. It's got to be Tiger Woods. <laughs> Been very impressed by the way he sunk the birdies. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> if I can just say something here, yeah, for sure, I might be interested in the Scotland manager's job, but it's a tough one. No one's going to come in with a magic wand and suddenly make things right. <laughs> Not now, Sooty. Not now. <laughs> bye bye. Yes, the big party's next here on BBC One Scotland, Hogmanay Live with Jackie, Phil, and friends. I mess around. Everybody do the mess around. Here he is now, the new Scotland boss. Uh, Craig, I'm sure the fans would like to know by wanting me to ask, uh, would you say there is much difference between the current Scotland squad and the squad you had at Cowdenbeath? Um, not really, no. 